I think it's refreshing that everyone's like, I'm a, I'm a, it's, we're a family. Yeah. We're one happy family. <laughs> That's what they what said when you? I got banned at the cellar. They said, well, I said, they said, we're a family here. I'm like, we are? I haven't, I never come to Christmas. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Before we get into this episode of the Column Tarot Podcast, I just want you to know that you can help support the growth of this podcast right now by heading over to patreon.com slash column tarot. Over there, I release an extra episode every week. That episode, believe it or not, is, is raw, it's hardcore, it's wild, and it's unedited. And I say a lot of stuff that I cannot say on YouTube. And most comedians, we cannot say on these platforms. But over there on Patreon, we still do that. For as little as $5 a month, you can get that extra episode every single week. And it does help us. We keep the lights on above our heads. We can keep the guests coming in and the staff will continue to edit these episodes. We can only do that for the fans like yourself who support us and personally support me or patreon.com slash column If you head over there right now, join the Patreon. We've got a back catalog of over 300 hours of all my previous podcasts. Guests include Dan, Dan Soder, Big J Okerson, Matt McCusker, Doug Stanhope, just to name a few. It's so much going on for as little as $5 a month. That's an absolute steal. Personally, you would help me out a lot. And I want to thank you so much for helping uh, me grow this podcast. And I want to thank you for the support already. So I won't hold you here any longer. Enjoy the episode. So I was in a meeting with, uh, with uh, uh, at one point, and I was like, I interrupted them. It was the head of uh, these. You could Google all these fucking names. Kevin Riley. <laughs> he was, he worked for, he worked for, I think he's at TBS now, but he was the head of NBC. Carolyn Strauss, she was around at HBO mm -hmm. when they did like everything Sopranos and uh, like that era. She was the second in command to, to uh, Chris Albrecht. And then, uh, then she, then she got fired when Chris Albrecht punched his girlfriend outside the MGM Graham. This is all, these are all facts. Uh, I, I'm not, a, I'm not a Gino Bisconti. I just don't make up random facts that suit my no, story. You, no. Chris Albrecht was the head of HBO. He punched his girlfriend outside of a MGM after a fight. And that's appropriate. What year was this? That he that he punched her? 2005? Yeah, two, the, the sitcom is 2005, 2006. Anyway, so... 2005 is uh, not the worst. So she got fired. So anyway, when, she, when he got fired... She got fired, but she, 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 what she got fired. Her name was Carolyn Strauss because oh, she worked oh, for him. Sorry, so they just sorry. got a whole new regime. You, Carolyn you. Strauss, uh, she, she, uh, she went out, she landed on her feet though. Cause she ended up producing game of Thrones for HBO. Never so you guys, even, even you guys don't even live here. You probably know that show, right? Cause it isn't all from uh, your part of the country. They did film them in Ireland. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so anyway, Carolyn Strauss and, and Kevin Riley were discussing something at a, at NBC at, at in a Burbank. That's where the, all the big, uh, offices are. And I interrupted them to like for something. I don't even remember. I was weird cause they were casting my brother and I interrupted them. And then I was like, uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't interrupt you guys, but I think I just put my two cents in because I can't. I never learn. I never learn. That's my well, new what catchphrase. Did you, what did you tell them? I never learn. You said don't. No, they talk. were saying they were saying my brother. They he didn't read good in the room or well. He didn't read well for the part. But I I explained to them like, no, this guy. This I've been talking to this guy off like behind the scenes while we were waiting to whatever. And he's like, he's a natural. Like he really was a good. Uh, I forget his name, but he's he did, he's doing well in showbiz. He's like handsome and people like him. But he yeah. would say shit to me. He like when we were one time we were uh, we were because he was playing a part of my brother Neil. So I said uh, at one point he goes he goes <laughs> and we were just we were just shooting the, the role, shit. The role he was born to play. We were just shooting the shit, and he goes this kid I forget his name, but he goes he goes do you love money? I go, I guess so. He goes no, do you love it? And I was oh. like, wow, this guy fucking, this guy knows how to, he's like a motivational speaker. I'm like, yeah, I fucking love it. <laughs> but it's, but that would be like, Neil would say something like that if he was cooler than he actually is. Like, Neil's not that cool to say stuff like that. Like, he wishes he was. But anyway, I'm thinking for the sitcom, this guy should be, like, cooler than the real Neil. Yeah. He should be a little bit more fucking. That was your suggestion? You go, don't hire my brother? Hire no, I just cooler? said, no, the guy was, you, Neil wouldn't, no. No, I wouldn't say that, but I would say, I might have said that. I might have said that. But I, but I basically was saying like, uh, like uh, mm -hmm. this guy's a natural as my brother. He was better being my brother than I was as being me. Oh wow! Why you couldn't do you? 
I couldn't like no. I get yeah. No, when people tell me what the, when I have to memorize what I have to say, I'm not as good. Like if we were if we were like doing a scene right now, yeah, I, I would be thinking about what I have to say instead of just like being like like present as they say in when, acting. When like you just like curb your enthusiasm, just sort of give you just some bullet points. Just go go in. You're angry. Is that what he does? They just say, hey, listen, you're angry about the pastrami sandwich is cost yeah, ten so, ninety nine. Yeah, I think that works better, especially because then you don't have to write it. If you're Larry David, you don't have mm. to write it. You you give him suggestions, but. And then, like, if a good actor will say something funnier, like, you know this from stand-up, like, sometimes I'll be like, say it this way, and then when I'm on stage, I say it a better way. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, shit, I was actually better. So if I was, like, the writer for me, I would be like, say it the way I wrote it. I'd be like, no, it's, it's but the way I said it on stage, because you get, like, something kicks in. All right. The yeah, adrenaline yeah. kicks I've, in. I have a question, and I don't want to get bogged down in comedy because everyone thinks it's gay. But did it you, is did gay. Do you ever say something for the first time on stage, like whatever, and it works amazing? And then you go, oh, that's how I say it. And then you repeat it, and it like never quite gets the same thing. Yeah, one time Why I did Why is that? A, What's that about? I don't, don't know. Did, when did you start? You started. It doesn't happen. Day. It doesn't happen very often. But one time I did a bit, I, I still remember, like I did a bit in Connecticut. And it killed, like it fucking killed. I was like, oh, this is sure. Cause it was like a easy kind of a bit, you know? I remember the bit, it was like, it was like uh, some some community, some town was gonna, um, if you kept, like they had a curfew and if you violated the curfew, you're, they were gonna find your parents. Okay. And I was like, that's fucking great. I would fucking stay out late every day and fucking fuck over my parents, you know, which I probably wouldn't have done in real life because my dad would have beat the fuck out of me. But in theory, yeah. like most parents are soft and they, so you could just get your parents in trouble for being a dick. Yeah. So I did a bit about it in Connecticut and then it, it worked great and never worked again. And I was like, this fuck this bit. And that's why you know, that's why most people <laughs> quit comedy, I think, because you're like, it's fucking exhausting. No, but at the same time, the opposite happens where you have, the bad comics, even if they're horrific, they'll, at least one in ten shows will still it will just happen to be good. And that, oh, yeah. that, that keeps them on the phone. Yeah, that keeps them at the table like a yeah. fucking gambler. They just that fucking, right, right. No, even, yeah. even the worst comics will have a good set, right? Yeah, because it's the crowd. Just it's the crowd. No, because sometimes the crowd's just good, and then uh, and you think it's you. Yeah, but that's why you should watch the guy before you and after you if you can to see if it's like. What if it's a woman? Would you would you watch that set too? That's a good question. Because <laughs> what's the what's the that's tricky, right? If I I want to, I was I told a story recently on my who's, show. Wait, wait, who's the best female comedian in the world? I don't think it exists. <laughs> <laughs> you got name? Who's a who's a? I don't even play that game anymore because I used to, <laughs> and I'm like I don't even get any props. I used to say it was Jessica Carson. And then I and then uh, I got into, I got a little bit little of a bit of a thing with her. What? How did you guess again? Because you remember when I had Kate uh, Kate Quigley? Remember Kate Quigley like killed three people with? Well, I don't know. If she killed them. <laughs> I don't know. No, she, she didn't kill them. I mean, what did I say? She because now I'm gonna get Johnny uh, no, Depp sued. No, no, no. She didn't. She didn't. What she I'm did was kidding. She, this is ironically. No, she, she murdered her friends. Oh right, right, right. This is what you said. Yeah. Just before we started <laughs> recording. No, so Kevin she, Brennan. So she, so she was partying with some people, and, the, and three died. There was four people partying, three died, and one survived. The one survivor was her. That's like a riddle. The one four survivor, people partying, it's like three died. Yeah, it's one like survived. a modern like math problem. Yeah. So anyway, so I said, uh, so so I said, uh, Kate. I tweeted. I said, Kate quickly got what she always wanted to be famous and kill. You know. <laughs> Hold on. Let me let me give you a little sound drop here. Hold on. Look. <laughs> They love that. Oh, so then, uh, <laughs> so then, uh, so then, uh, and I didn't see anybody else saying anything, you know. But I just, I had a little thing with K quickly anyway, like because I, I had warned, I, I kept saying that, like she's always like, she's hot, yeah, but she's always putting out pictures, and then, and then, who does she think is going to go to her show? Like some dude, I said, some weird is going to happen to her. I thought something sexual. I didn't know she was going to fucking end up with three dead bodies in her house. <laughs> so. uh so then, uh, but you you knew something was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. You can't live that life and have not have something. What happen. life? What, just... That fucking uh, coke whore <laughs> life. <laughs> so Jessica <laughs> Carson, Jessica Carson tweeted. Jessica's great friend of friend of the show. Jessica Carson tweeted that she tweeted. She goes, anybody that uh, anybody that's uh, making jokes about Kate quickly is not is not 
something is not a is not part of the comedy family and something something real you know what fucking i was gonna say gay but i guess i can't say it because just talking about anyway it's real gay it was a real gay thing but she's gay so maybe that's maybe it makes sense yeah so then i so then i let it sit for like a little maybe five minutes and then I and then I retweeted. I go, I go, Jessica, just tag me if you. I said, I said, at least have the fucking balls to tag me. Yeah. If you're gonna fucking. And she goes, I wasn't. Then she retweeted. I wasn't talking about you, Kevin. I was like, who who are you talking about? Even if you're not talking about me, about me, you're still talking about me because I tweeted. I made a joke. So even if you're saying I, yeah, I wasn't talking about you specifically, you're still talking about me because I made a joke and I don't. I didn't see anybody else make a joke. So, and then after that, I was like, fuck all comics because they're all such babies. And then they, and then they put out <laughs> tweets. No, then they put out tweets and I'm like, name names, name names. If you say something, you're a fucking coward. If you put out a tweet and you have a name in mind and you, and then you don't go, oh, I don't want, I'm not going to name names, name names, you fucking cowards. Like co comics are such cowards because like rappers kill each other yeah. on, regu on a regular basis. And then comics think they're tough because I put out a mean tweet, even though I didn't name anybody. Fuck, suck a dick. <laughs> Seriously. So, so I, so yeah, so female comics and male comics, it's like whatever. But I'll watch people. You know, if I have a great set, I might watch somebody and be like, oh, yeah, because, you know, you don't want to get diluted into thinking like, oh, that's a great bit or something. And because uh, that's, that happens too. It happens to everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. Where you have a you do a thing something that works and then it then it kind of never works again. But the crowd was hot, so that's that used to happen a lot when I was a rookie. I would like fucking I would have like a ten minute set or something, and everything would work, and I would write it all down in my fucking notebook, like how mm. I set it off my tape recorder, and then it wouldn't. So now I'm more like I'm not, now I'm more like eh, let's see if it works before I fucking write it. Let's see if I work if it works twice before I write it down, like it's fucking okay. gospel. Does it does it ever get exhausting? Being talking you, to you being you oh. <laughs> well you're talking my to me. wife i'm not asked, talking back who are you my wife my wife asked <laughs> me that literally uh, on a regular basis she goes be. you don't get tired of this it's like i go no i don't you, i don't like, jessica i've never heard anyone have a problem with jessica i know Jackson. isn't that refreshing how do you do this isn't it how refreshing do you find the, one of the nicest i think people it's in refreshing comedy? i think it's refreshing that everyone's like i'm a from a it's we're a family yeah. we're one happy family <laughs> That's who, what they what said when you? I got banned at the cellar. They said, well, "I said they said we're a family here." I'm like, "We are." I haven't. I never come to Christmas. <laughs> uh, maybe because you guys are Jewish. Yeah. No, it's like we're not a family. We're not a family. Okay. Yeah. We could be. You, I feel like they did. Someone hurt you. What happened? We're, Jessica. I on? mean, for Kate Quickly, for me not to make a joke about Kate Quickly would have been uh, would be easy. Would be easy for me not to do because I because we're all. We're all supportive as a family, but it would be like almost cowardice on my part because I already had a thing with her. Plus, it was a delicious fucking story. And the best part is she actually went on her YouTube, on her podcast and told told the story about what happened. It didn't even do th that well on YouTube. So I'm like, nobody even gives a fuck her about her. That's the whole thing. It's like it's like nobody cares. Nobody even cares. She 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 had a great story. She had like the greatest story that has happened to anybody in the last whatever she was partying with yeah. people. And she, three of them she died. Woke, she woke up like in you know in Kill Bill. Did you ever see when she yeah. came home and she just woke up? <gasps> yeah, you know. And, and then and, and then and, and then she was, was like she 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 said her legs couldn't move. Like the story was really compelling. And then you look at her YouTube. It's probably not even at ten thousand. Like it didn't it didn't do well. And I was like, what the fuck? That's when I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck do people want? Like what do, what do they want? They want like Mark Norman go, hey, hey, I'm in I'm in Texas, everybody. Hey, I'm a hack. Hey, everything's a question mark. Hey, hey, I do a lot of word plays. I'm Mark Norman. Is that what they want? <laughs> I, I guess so, because that you put he puts those fucking hack little fucking uh, shorts on YouTube and they do great. And he's terrible for how well he does. Especially on YouTube. Compared to Kate Quigley, people died. Her legs didn't move. So she couldn't even check on a guy. She kept saying his name and he wasn't moving. And it was dark out. So she was like, how long did I sleep? And then how, how, how is this guy still asleep? But he was, and because he wasn't asleep, he was dead. Quincy, dead. 
Quincy was a show. You don't even remember that. No, I didn't. I never even heard. None, of that. none of you guys did. None of your listeners do either. About that guy who has the cancer. Remember the guy who got the HBO special? Because Quincy. Had, Quincy Jones had got. He was on Ellen because he was dying of cancer, and they gave him an HBO special. And then he just. Oh. Then he just just never died. Just never got around to it. Oh really? Just been busy touring. <laughs> remember that guy? No, I I, I, I don't think bad. that was his I name. I bad, but I, I, brought, I don't think that was his name. I bring it up every year. He's still he's still fucking going strong. Quincy he's fucking Jones. healthier than I am. The guy's been dying of cancer for six years. Quincy Jones. I think that yeah, he named himself after the um the, the, the producer. Uh, listen, I'm not saying the guy, I'm not saying the guy doesn't have cancer, but he's, he's got, black, he, right? Yeah, he got an yeah. HBO special because he had cancer. He was dying. And it was called like Go to the Light or My Last Wish or whatever. Oh yeah, and 2015. <laughs> He, he fucking lived through COVID, maybe, dude. Maybe, he, he, dude. The guy. <laughs> I'm not I'm like good for you, but like sell your fucking DNA. What well, else the thing? No, that's the thing. He could have been lying. No. Did, did they check? Did they go to the doctor? Did HBO go to the doctor? Yeah, I would imagine. Comics Ellen, will lie no. about everything. Comics Listen, will lie about there's everything. There's no Ellen DeGeneres must get must get letters every single day going. Oh, my daughter has chlamydia. Whatever the fuck. Can you give her a free fucking tell? You think whatever. That would... All day, every day, Ellen is getting bombarded with people yeah. pretending to be retarded yeah. so that they can get on TV. They do a little dance, get yourself a hundred thousand yeah. dollars for sure. Don't you think so? It's Ellen. Yeah, but so you're saying they have to check they everybody? Have fact checkers. They, they have to vet it. Unless he, unless he's just a smooth talker or something, but poor guy, poor guy lived. What's well, like never, these like, people that can say today? Because like now there's loads of people who think he's faked it. No, but like Gerard, no, like, what, what, what are you gonna do? Like he, he Gerard Carmichael said he's gay now, right? To get an HBO special, but did he have to fuck somebody in front of him? Anybody? He didn't like, have like, to. Like you don't, just, you just say you're gay. You say you're gay. He wore a white suit. On SNL, and that, I even thought like I I didn't I wasn't watching it with the sound on. I'm like, wow, that's a gay suit. Like I really thought that. I'm like, I'm like, is he gay now? Because you can't wear that on SNL without like with no shirt, just a fucking white suit. I heard he was always gay though. Yeah, but he came out as gay now. So so why are you shouting? That he's I don't gay? know. He so came the, out as gay. So the point is that like, but do you have to prove you're gay? Like it's a good story, but do you have to prove you're gay? No. Did he have to prove the guy that he had cancer? What would you rather be, uh, have cancer or gay? Um. <laughs> Jessica Kirsten's not gonna like that you paused there. <laughs> She's a friend of the show. Remember you? I'm just you saying. Already told me that you can you can cure you can cure cancer. You know? That's true. Can't cure gay. It's not a... You can't. You can't, yeah, as much as you can try. Well, you can... Uh, you can... Uh, I'd rather be gay. All right. A gay man. Fair. I'd rather be a gay man than have cancer. I'd rather be a gay man now. Just, yeah, just... Just I, the fucking... You, just, had, you had me at gay. I'm just... A, I just like can explain to my wife, it's not It's not you, it's me. Oh, yeah? Are you at the age now where you... you no, I'm just... Repulsive? Huh? No, like I still like having sex with my wife, but it's like women are like, or women are like, uh, they they expect a lot from you, you know. Where a guy would be like, "Hey, come on, walk it off." <laughs> yeah. No, like if you dump a guy and he starts crying, be like, "Come on, dude." Yeah. Come on, dude. Let's be you know, man. Let's be a man well, about I mean, this. Uh, you know, and the rebound is great for a guy because he just goes out and just fucking. You just go to the fucking port authority. It's three blocks yeah, from here. Exactly. Yeah. Just go to the park. Get I even know which. I even know which bathroom it is. Oh yeah, stumbled on there one time. You did? A couple of times, I imagine. Couple, yes. Every every fucking second Thursday, time every I'm Thursday like, nine o'clock. <laughs> second time I was like, "Hey, what am I doing here again?" Yeah. Jimbo, shame on me. Yeah. All right. But there's this, so you you're calling Mark Norman the hack. You yeah, call, I you, just you, you just it's say just that. good nature ribbing. Is no, it, but I mean, come on. Who, be, who deserves their success? Who do you like that's successful that you think is like, oh, there's a good guy. One of the good guys made it. You know, I used to say, uh, you Mark know, it's funny. No, Norm Macdonald. Never. Uh, Norm Macdonald. Like, can I talk about that for a second? Please. Tell me. Because I actually know Norm a little bit because I used to work you... for him a little bit. And uh, so I thought it was like, did you guys watch it? No, not yet. It's weird because it wasn't bad. He basically sat in a chair like you're sitting there with headphones on. And, and then just told the special. So yeah, and good just kind of talked to kind of talked to the thing. So then they then they. uh then they um so then, wait, then they so, had a wait wait hold on people don't know Norm Macdonald obviously died they don't know Norm Macdonald no I'm just saying he died he had cancer and it'd be funny he, if your fans are so stupid they didn't they, know Norm Macdonald they're all Irish they're all Irish. no <laughs> he's like an Irish version of me all right um or sorry American version of me yeah so then he released his, he recorded his special 
um, before he died. But yeah. it was just over Zoom or something, was it? Or something? Yeah, just like he's sitting... No at, audience at all, no? No, sitting at his computer, so... Oh, but when Drew Michael does it, everyone thinks it's fucking shitty, but when... Yeah, that's what Chappelle said after it was done. So anyway, oh. I, watched, I watched like 15 minutes of it, and then I cut to... Because I knew that they had people talking about it after, like uh, it was David Letterman and Conan O'Brien and... David Spade, Adam Sandler, and Molly Shannon, and Chappelle. So, uh, uh, and then Chappelle said the same thing. He goes, he goes, I feel like I owe Drew Michael an apology because I hated his when he did without an audience, but I enjoyed this. But what's he going to say? What's he going to say? I didn't like it. Yeah. So then Letterman goes, Letterman goes, it wasn't really stand up because there's no audience. I'm like, good take, Dave. <laughs> good take. <laughs> It wasn't really stand up because it's not an audience. <laughs> wow. Thanks for chiming in, Dave. So, and then he wouldn't shut the fuck up, and neither would Chappelle. And I was like, so these, so Dave thinks <laughs> I have to talk the most because I'm like the dad because I'm the most senior person here. Yeah. And all these guys look up to me, but we don't anymore, you know? Yeah. And then, and also Chappelle is just like, you know, Chappelle's like, well, I'm the most popular guy here now, so I got to talk a lot too. And I was like, it, it basically ruined it because. They're just talking about like, you know, norms like, uh, you know, the, the special or, you know, how good he was, how he didn't need notes. Who gives a fuck? He's dead. He's dead. Yeah. He's dead. And he basically was just doing it to do it. Like, I know Norm enough to do it. He'll just do stuff because it's weird. Yeah. Like he norms has a real norms, like a genuinely like you seem like a nice guy, like seriously. But Norm is like Norm is like the more you the more you deal with him, you really, more you realize he's just like. He's just like a good guy, you know? Mm. He's not perfect, but he's just like, he's not a mean-spirited guy, you know? So, but he's also like quirky, so he he wanted to just do it to do it in case, he basically did it, supposedly he did it because he was going in for stem cell uh, transplant or whatever they call it, and then, uh, and he thought if something bad happens, he just wanted to have it because he, you know, he had all these jokes that he was going to do, and COVID came and, you know, all this shit. So he's like, well, in case something, and then he was right. He was right. He'd never got a chance to do it. But they're analyzing it. I'm like, why well, you guys are fucking arrogant. And then somebody tweeted the same thing like these. Some, somebody t tweeted on Twitter who I don't oh, yeah? even. Yeah, that's the new thing. <laughs> they tweet on Twitter. Good. No, but uh, I hope I, all your Irish friends don't turn on me now because I'm stupid because I said he <laughs> tweeted on Twitter as opposed to tweeting on Facebook. So uh, by, one guy who I don't even like on Twitter said exactly what I was say, thinking and I didn't even like it or retweet it because I, I didn't want to encourage Sassy. the guy. But anyway, he basically said like we really he goes he goes the special was fine, but we don't need these arrogant fucking gas bags or whatever the fuck mm. you call when someone talks a lot. Just talking about it and it's just like just tell old norm stories. The norm stories are the best stories. Like his stories, everybody has a good norm. Every everybody Please. has dealt with them. Spade has a good one. Have you got a good one? Spade has a yeah, I have a good one. Spade has a good one. Uh um with with Conan that's on YouTube you can check it where where it's just funny like the norm stories are all fucking funny nor I worked for norm I didn't even know him when I got the job so but he know we you know he knew about me a little bit and of course I knew about him yeah if I'm trying to get a job on his show so uh so then uh he used to get a job from Lori Joe who was his producer and she was the one that was like involved with the even putting out this thing like she's kind of famous every article mentions her and anyway, she was like his right hand man. She was like, uh, he, he, they, they. She was a woman. He was a man, and but they never had it. It never went beyond that. And and I, I'm starting to think it's because I think Lori Joe reminded Norma of his mom. Like his mom was really sweet. And even at the very end, his last joke was about his mom. And you could see he was about to cry. I'm even about to cry talking about it. But like Lori Joe was just a very sweet lady. She's from like uh, upstate somewhere, somewhere upstate. I don't even know if it's this day. No, I think she's from like <laughs> Iowa or someplace. And and I think Norm liked that because she worked at SNL and everybody at SNL is like, even if they're not a shark, they try to pretend they're sharks, you know? Yeah. And Lori Joe was like very unassuming. So that she became his like produce, producer of like 30 years. Anyway, so, uh, so anyway, she couldn't give him a ride home one time from the show. And I had, and so I was staying at my brother Neil's house. This is 2011. I stayed at my brother Neil's house because he wasn't there in Venice. And Norm lived close by, and everybody knew that. So Lord Joe goes, Kevin, you give Norm a ride. So I was like, all right, I'll give Norm a ride. And I think maybe I'll make some points with the boss because I wasn't getting a lot of jokes on, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
so it's not even a good ride home, you know, because he's all he's all he's got he got he smoked pot or whatever he's smoking pot in the car, and then he goes he goes if the cops pull us over say this is uh, Stevie Stevie uh, Stevie Ray Fromstein's weed, and he's a he's a comic that Norm started with in Canada. You can Google that too. Anyway, <laughs> imagine if the cops pull me over, and Norm Stevie Ray. First of all, the cops are going to believe anything Norm says because. Uh, it's Norm, and I'm just the loser driving him. You know, yeah. I'm his fucking writer. And anyway, so uh, so uh, so I'm like, that's a dumb thing to do. Like, if the cops, hey, it's Stephen Ray Fromstein, where, yeah, we're holding it for him. He lives in Canada. Anyway, so anyway, Norm was all high. You know, when you, someone's high and you're not, you yeah. just feel like it's, they're just all. You feel like this guy's weird, but then they think you're weird. <laughs> so anyway, so he drops. He drops, and it's Friday. We don't work the next day. So uh, he goes, uh, he goes, you want to come up? I go, no, because I think he's testing to see if I'm gay or not. OK, you know? yeah, of course. Classic. He goes, you want to come up? And I go, no, not at all. And he goes, I'm, he goes, I'm not going to try to fuck you. <laughs> I go, all right, I'll come up. <laughs> so then I go up and then like nothing happens. Lori Joe calls and she's like, you got home OK? And, and then she wants me to talk to She's like, Kevin, you all right? He was OK in the car. I go, yeah, he was OK. So then, uh, and then Norm starts reading a book to me. He goes, you, he goes, uh, you go, you know, this writer, I go, no. And, uh, he starts reading the book and I'm like, is he trying to fuck me? <laughs> Does, isn't that what you do? You read to someone like a, if you get a lady S up, serenade, is it? isn't it like a thing? Irish thing. Reading like you guys it? are like poets. You like poets and, Poetry, and uh, writers. Yeah. yeah. So don't you read to a lady? Yeah. Get some, get some going. Anyway. Uh, so then I, so then he, then he basically reads to me. He realizes it's not working. So then he goes, "Get the fuck out of here!" So <laughs> he got angry. No, he didn't get it. He goes, "All right, go home." Okay. <laughs> so then the next day at work, he goes, "So Brennan drives me." He all the, in front of all the writers. He goes, "So Brennan, Brennan uh, drops me off at my house because Lori Joe can't give me a ride." And then he, we get to my, my house. He goes, Brennan goes, "Can I come up?" <laughs> And I go, Brennan, you trying to fuck me? <laughs> <laughs> he completely turns it. And then it's like, and everyone's howling. And I'm like, that didn't even happen that way. But I'm like, that's how that's it's just funny. Like everybody has a norm story. So don't analyze, and that's not even that good a story. But like these guys have like spade and fucking and then uh Nick Swartzen was telling a story. I I texted Nick Swartzen because I got a little beef with him. So I texted oh. him because I saw him on Theo Vaughn's show. And I said, why are you doing that moron show and you won't do my show? And he goes, well, you don't live in California. Because I've known Nick Sway. He goes, you, he, I've known him. He goes, you're the, my first friend in comedy. I go, I was. Anyway, Nick <laughs> Swartzen, go to YouTube. And Nick Swartzen has a great fun. Nick Swartzen has like, he has a, like an hour's worth of great Norm stories because yeah. they were friends and stuff. So it's like, don't analyze this fucking Dave Letterman is like, it wasn't stand up. I'd like to see it with an audience. Yeah, that means he he that means he'd be living. I would too. <laughs> That's what Dave said. I'd like to see it with an audience. I would too, because that means Norm would still be alive. So yeah. so tell just tell Norm stories. It would be like a wake where they just they talk about the guy how he was at his job. He was a good plumber, Earl. <laughs> Earl was a good plumber. No, we don't care. Tell the funny stories. Yeah. So everybody has a good story about Norm. These and Spade and Sandler. They at the ass. So I stopped watching it. Maybe they got to Norm stories, but uh, and then Conan. They all bother you, these guys, these millionaires. Yeah, they do. They all they really do. <laughs> you know who really bothers me? Letterman, because I put I worship absolutely worship Letterman. Oh, no. Starting out like worshiped him. Yeah. And then with, with the beard. Yeah. And then with the, the like the, the castaway look. Yeah, and then he with has. like the he he always he loves he I think he What about him cheating on his wife and then just fucking owning it? That was pretty cool. Remember? No, supposedly Remember he cheated on his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, someone tried to well, he was black, getting black yeah, yeah, and he just goes, "Yo, fuck you." Yeah, of course I'm cheating on her. <laughs> Drop the mic. That was he didn't that, do that. That was yeah. He dropped the he mic. He didn't say, "Of course I'm cheating on he, her." And, they, and he said, "Faggot." He and then he dropped the mic. Was Gina's, that, that was Gina's gonna get you canceled. That was him, right? No, you know what? Supposedly, someone, someone did yeah, that. it's Letterman. Yeah. But you know why he? You know why he's uh, doing all these things now? You know he's doing the Netflix show and all this stuff. Supposedly broke, is he? I, I know a guy that knows Paul Schaefer really well. I don't know Paul Schaefer at all, but I know a guy who's Paul Schaefer. who knows Paul Schaefer. Come on, 
His band, band his band leader sidekick, Paul Schaefer. I've never watched a single thing he's done ever. David Letterman. What like what late night t- television? The like, the talk show shit. I've never. You don't know Paul Schaefer. No, okay, I know Paul. Lewis Schaefer. Do you know Lewis Schaefer? Yeah. He used to work not at the Boston Comedy not Club. Gay. Yeah, Lewis Schaefer, not gay. <laughs> Very handsome, not gay. Yeah. So uh, no, Paul Schaefer <laughs> was. Knows. <laughs> Paul Schaefer was his Ed McMahon. You know Ed McMahon? Mm-hmm. Okay, he's his Ed McMahon. So uh, I now now I know you're putting me on, but anyway, <laughs> no, I don't know who that is either. Paul Schaefer says that Dave's wife hates him so much because he cheated on her like publicly that she's like she's not going to divorce him, but she's like just get the fuck out of the house, like oh. get out of the house. But that happens a lot when people retire. The wife's like just get out of the fucking house. My parents get, my parents got divorced because of that. That's why mom said she goes why don't you pick up golf because all all her. All her friends' husbands play golf. And my dad's like, first of all, I have red hair and pale skin, so I'm gonna I can't be in the sun for four hours. Yeah. You fucking cut. <laughs> so he divorced her. I think that's why people get divorced now is because there's so much communication. Like, you know, there's a phone call, there's texts, you're it's you're seeing each other too much. But back in the day, you'd only see each other when you're at home. You know, yeah, but also, see, or you go to war. Yeah, but also, you, you, also, you, it's easier to meet people now. So why not get divorced? Because you know, you know, because of the, God, God, God doesn't like it. No, but you know, there's plenty of fish in the sea because there's a website called Plenty of Fish in the Sea. Is Very, that one of your sponsors? That's not. No, oh, you pointed out the thing like that was one of your sponsors. No, that was because it was a good joke. Oh. I went, anyway, <laughs> I went, but you, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't, yeah, if I wouldn't. I don't think I would have got divorced if I. I mean, I wouldn't have got married if I had an iPhone in yeah. 2006. That's, I wouldn't have got married. You should write that in your when you renew your vows. Yeah. <laughs> had the iPhone no, been I around. Have, I had the iPhone. Like, the iPhone had keeps o- you pretty busy. Only fans. Yeah. I mean, people get married now. I'm like, I don't, I don't completely understand it. Unless you're going to have a family. Or unless yeah. you're, like, very religious. What about, yeah, it's just, it's just, I think it's just a good Christian home. Just two parents, opposite sex, and a couple of kids. That's the. Yeah, but not not here, not in New York. Not in New York. Well, but then you got to First of all, I'm not even. Uh, I'm not joking. But when you have when you have kids, then you got to move because the apartment's too too small. Where do you live? It don't matter. <laughs> but we have to move. We have to. We have to move. Yeah. We have to move. We where you gonna go? Go south. Go down to fucking I'm going Atlanta to with Tennessee. fucking Nick DiPaolo. Who, yeah, I'm gonna going? go Nick DiPaolo. You and Nick. Me and screaming. I'm gonna go to uh, Tennessee and hang out with Nate Bragazzi and Theo. Theo lives there. Theo, yeah. So that's Nick Swartzen was lying to you. He went to he went to fucking Nashville. He did. Yeah. Theo does a show Theo, in Nashville. Theo lives in Nashville. Oh, I didn't know. I thought he was in LA. So I'll fly Nick Swartzen in and do a show here. I'll fly him in. Yeah. All right. Well, then the, the beef is squashed. We're squashing beefs right now. Yeah. So well, who, he'll say, and he'll, who, who else have you got a beef with that you would like to? F- I'm not fix? squashing anything. No. No. Who Who would you like to start a beef with that you kind of someone Mark, Mark Norman? You and Mark don't have. I just don't like him. <laughs> Dude, Mark. Right, he's part of the. He's a. He's a. He's another friend of the show. Friend of the show. Another person who won't do the show. There's a friend of the show. <laughs> Between him and Jessica, we've got a fucking big, big crew of people not doing the podcast. No, you're. You. Yeah. You, why'd you hate Mark so much? No, I should hang out at uh the stand. I I pretended I had a feud with the stand. Oh, but then you know it's funny. It actually, you know, what was it called? Life imitates art or Something whatever. Like that. Some bullshit. Yeah. Because uh, Patrick used to send me. The availability email. <laughs> you don't send it to no? me anymore. No, and I'm more friendly. We you, were. What did you do? No, I said I was banned because um, uh, I put in. I when they open like last June or whatever. When they when they open like for and they were having regular shows. Like I know the whole time they were having outside shows on the street. And yeah, I, I don't want to do them. Why not? Because I'm an inside cat. <laughs> Once you've been inside, you can't go outside. So, right? uh, so then when I then I opened last, I guess June or May, I put in for one of the months, and I put in a lot, and then uh, I didn't get anything. So then I was saying I was banned, and then people are tweeting at whenever the stand will put out something, they would go, mm-hmm. "Why is Kevin Brennan banned?" And he go, "He's not banned." But then, <laughs> and then they would send me emails, and then I was, uh, and then. Uh, and the, but I never put in again, and then and now I don't get the emails Just anymore. Just text him. Just say hey. No, I'm not gonna. I I might. He I listens am, to the show. I he probably He's a does. Of the show. I pro I know, but I love Patrick. So it's yeah. not about it's not about Patrick. It's about I got to stand up to the man. No, it's not even that. It's just like it's just like I I get kind of spooked by that neighborhood and uh, and uh, you know if I'm not Union I, Square. Yeah, it's creepy, man. You you don't go there a lot. I go there all the time. Okay, it's it's a live for a guy my age. Like I'm not, I don't, I don't roller. Forty five. 
50. No, I don't. I don't skateboard to the stand like you guys do, <laughs> yeah. like you and Lewis do. No, so I don't. I get a city bike. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> clang, clang. <laughs> yeah, I bring my own little. You're in the bike lane. My bell. I don't have That's a bell. Not a bad ring, thing. Ring. It's actually not a bad thing to go to the stand because then you don't have to park it. You just lock it up and then you, you don't you're not responsible for it. It's not yeah. a bad idea. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I just got it. And plus, I'm kind of I'm not I'm I might be phasing out of stand up. I don't know. You mean like it's not your choice? Is that what you mean? Yeah, because I'm not having good shows. You, so, no, no. What? So so if I if this continues what? What's, I probably won't be doing it anymore. So, so e uh, what's going on? Are you too miserable? No, they, I think I'll, I'm either I'm either at the beginning of the end or or I'm at the uh, I'm at a early stages of like a, a surge. I can't tell which it is. You think this is like your Richard Pryor moment, going from clean to dirty type of thing? No, I think it's going from, go from. I think you like go from I, old to very old. <laughs> yeah, I think like I don't. I think on some level, I don't want to even. I don't even. I don't care what the audience. You thinks. hate them. You hate the. No, idea. I don't care what they think about me. You don't even want them to laugh. No, it's not that. I don't care. About, I know I'm better than them. Okay. Like, I'm a superior being to them. Like, they're cowards. They sit there in their... In in, in the crowd and they're hiding and they judge and they're and they're on and they're on on Yelp and shit and it's like they're fucking cowards and I don't even think that but like that's a that I'm not consciously going like but I know that I don't care what they think about me because I know I'm a better I mean I was like what the other night I'm like who are you the guy was like 27 he's been married for two years I'm like what the fuck is wrong with you and then he's like and then the woman's like I'm pretty cool I'm not a I'm pretty cool to be married so I go you're a dumb cunt. You're 25. Like, what could you possibly know? I'm it's like, just, I'm old and I don't um, even know stuff. Yeah. Gina Biscotti's like 55 and he's like, he's like a, he's like a straight, he'd be homeless if it wasn't for Anthony Cumia. So, so the fact that she thinks she's cool. And then there was another lady. She was from Hawaii. And I go, why would you leave Hawaii to come to this fucking shithole? And it was like, I was like, they're just more, they're losers. So the fact that they can like, make me feel good or bad is pathetic. It's like having a fat girl play with your emotions. Like, why would you, <laughs> why would you allow that? You know, like they, she just, she's just, they're beneath me. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. And also <laughs> like, I think I've, I think I'm like, uh, like, I don't want to be one of those guys to be like, Hey, I'm still, I, I, you know, like leave it to the fucking no, hacks. I like Mark know. Norman. <laughs> He'd be like, Hey, is that a joke? I don't know. I know it's a word play. I like word plays, Mark Norman. That's a fact, and I'll fight him wherever he is. You, but you know what? The thing is, you know what the funny thing about Mark Norman is? You think he's little because he's like a boy? Like, he yeah, looks I, like I, a boy. Yes, he is deceptive. You think tall, he's, he? but then whenever he's on Jim and Sam, he's like the tallest guy there. So, yeah, but that Jim and Sam are fucking. I know, but you'd think he would be the littlest guy. Like, you'd think he'd almost be like sitting on someone's lap. That's how much a boy he is. And then he'd stand next to Jim and Sam, and he's taller than them. He, he towers over Bobby Kelly because Bobby Kelly is little. Bobby's another friend of the show. But not a, not little this way. He's little this way. And you, a lot of times you don't notice until they're in a picture and you get a frame of reference. Yeah. What happened with you and Bobby? That's another one you fell out with, is it? Yeah, but you I, and Bobby, me and Bobby for years had a bad had a bad thing. Can, because can I patch it up? Can I be the, the nope? Can I be the middle man? Never I'll happen. Be the, well, come on, I'll, I'll organize. I guess. that'll never I'll organize. Happen. I'll bring you for dinner. And I'll bring him for dinner, and then I'll trap the two of you together. And you can that might work because I know Bobby loves dinner. <laughs> oh shit! Sorry. I know he'll show up. I know he'll show yeah. up for dinner for a dinner meeting. Yeah, Kevin will show up. He doesn't it's, care who's there as long as it's a free meal. <laughs> oh. I'm Bobby Kelly, and I no. like to eat. That's not a problem for you to, what? for a guy to, if he's a friend of the show to be that fat. That's not a cry for help. It's, it's America. Do whatever you want. All right. You know. All right. As long as he's well. so. Yeah. No. I. 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 Bobby wanted me to work for free. And and I signed a contract that I would work for free, and he wanted that to continue. And I was like, Bobby, I don't know if you know, but I don't know if you pay attention to my act, but I'm like, I have I have a family, so I can't work for free, uh, in perpetuity. You know, I'm, I'm gonna get a call or a text. He's like, you know what, dude, that's not what he fucking, that's not what happened. No, that's exactly he, what it, happened. I don't. I'm sure he's gonna say. He, something I had a contract where I, I didn't get paid, and then I, Kumia wanted me to do a show at his network, and Bobby's like, nope. I go, Bobby, first of all, my lawyer said that I can work. I can do another show. I just can't call it Misery Loves Company. He's like, nope. He goes, I don't care. He goes, you're not doing another show to another network. I'm like, so you want me to work at your network for free? 
And that was when people, a lot of people just did one show. Now everyone does like seven shows. What Are you are you ever wrong in any of these arguments? Do you ever feel like... I'll in, consider... It, do, I'll you consider ever, do you ever stop and go, you know what, maybe... in it, I do all the time. That That's the a dust, good point. Because that you know who doesn't settled. do that? Gina Bisconti. <laughs> Gina Bisconti. Stop bringing him up. No one knows a fucking I know. Dude. That's what makes it so <laughs> funny. He is. <laughs> Can we track the, the Google searches for fucking Gino Bisconti? I'm, like, um, I'm like bringing up a guy who lives in my building. <laughs> yeah. Terry people, Phillips is fucking at it again. Like, who is Gino Bisconti? <laughs> exactly. That's why I keep bringing him up because I know the Irish fans would be like, I need another pint. <laughs> this Whoa, is driving me crazy. Irish. This is driving me crazy that I don't know this Gino Bisconti fella. Yeah. No, but no, it, well, it's like Gino dust- Bisconti never considers that he's wrong. I always consider the fact that I'm wrong because my wife ever, is. Do you always- ever stop and go? Maybe I'm I'm a prick. Yeah. I, no. I, I I'm not even going to argue that. I won't even dispute that. <laughs> would I, you ever do that to fix it? Meditate? Just just stop. No. Stop I ex- I exercise a lot, but I, I'll consider. I always consider the fact that I'm wrong, but I but then I'm like the other, but the other person's probably wrong too. I'll yeah. consider, like, I had a thing with Louis C.K. And then I was like. Never met him. And then, <laughs> you, I mean, I, maybe you don't know if you don't know Paul Schaefer or Ed McMahon. <laughs> no, but I basically told Louis, I go, I, I mean, the point was, I was, I was, I might have been wrong, but he, he was wrong. We were both wrong. So, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to like. So I, I know I know his point of view. I, I know Bobby's point of view. I know everyone's point of view. I'm not taking, I'm not taking anyone's side anymore. That's I think what I used to. That was a mistake I used you to You don't make. even take your own side in the argument? No, I take my side because I have a financial stake in my side. But okay. for the most part, I could I could argue their side as well as I could argue my side. But I'm not but I'm not in I'm not in that game anymore to argue someone's side. Well, you always So Bobby will say, I put you on the map. True. Podcast wise, he put me on the map. He got me a platform. Uh the show was an instantaneous success. And and then, but Bobby was like, so there you go, Bobby Kelly, give him around. So like, Bobby was like, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby was nice like, guy. okay, Bobby. After I quit, Bobby's like, you had the fastest growing show we ever had. Like my numbers were like fucking great. And then when Lenny quit, the numbers went up. You think the show would get fucking go down? The numbers went up. The numbers went <laughs> Any up. Any chance to throw in a little dig? The numbers huh? went up, but but Bobby still was like, don't care, dude. Yeah. We would. If you if you want to do a show with Kumia. Uh, uh, you're not doing a show here. I'm like, well, I can't do a show here. You're not going to pay me. And the contract says you don't pay me. Zero dollars. I talked to Lenny one time. I go, Bye. Lenny, Lenny, because uh, Opie, remember, you know, Opie and Anthony? There was a guy named Opie. He used to do a show with, called, with Anthony. And, okay. and Opie was like, uh, Opie wanted me and Lenny to do a test show for when he was still at Sirius because he used to have like Opie and Friends mm. Network that Rich Voss was on and Bonnie. I don't like Bonnie, but my wife loves Bonnie. So. Bonnie's a friend. No, of I know, I know. I'm saying that because you're like, can you find someone you like? And I was kidding. That <laughs> everybody likes Bonnie, but I'm saying like uh, everybody likes Bonnie just because she's married to Voss. If for that alone, and then on top of that, she's funny and she's attractive and a nice lady. But my wife was the the rich Voss roast, and she was like, Bonnie was the fucking best one on the whole roast. Anyway, mm, so uh, great. so so Opie used to have this thing, Opie and Friends, or the Opie yeah. Network, and he would have shows on. So he said, I said, uh, he wanted me and Lenny to fucking do a test show. And Lenny goes, well, we have a contract with Bobby Kelly. I'm like, for zero dollars, Lenny. Lenny, you're a Jew. You understand how these things work. All right. All right. Listen, no, no, that, no why, why won't you say, why if I say someone's a what? Jew, why if I say someone's a Jew, it's taken as like a thing. If I say, if, I, if someone says you're a Catholic, I go, that's right, I am. Yeah, I don't know why. It's, so it's, so, cause, it's, cause so you know, why? So why? So so it's the same thing. That's you're a Jew. I'm a Catholic. So why why would why did they take it so personally if you say because when you a say Jew? you say I hate these fucking Jews. No, That's I like, didn't. You said it. <laughs> Are you gonna dub me saying that I? <laughs> can you can you melt something so uh, my thing gets canceled? I fucking hate blacks. <laughs> um, yeah, but what's what's gonna happen? Why you always like this? You weren't always like this. You used to be like a guy in the scene. Everyone yeah. loved you. You're yeah. out there. You're finger fucking Sarah, Sarah Silverman or whatever. You get out like everyone was like, oh, it's Kevin. KB. No, KB in that. the house. And no, then, it was never And then one like day that. you, you fucking all shriveled No, you up. know what happened? You know what happened? Uh, what happened? Colin Quinn has the best take. Colin Quinn okay. said. And, and you, are you and Colin good? I like Colin. Does he like you? Probably not. <laughs> so he says, uh, he goes, he's, he, he said, when Brennan shows up, no one ever goes, hey, good, Brennan's here. <laughs> Yeah, that's like right. when I show up at the comedy cellar table, no one ever goes, "Hey, good, Brennan's here." 
Like yeah. when Mark Mark Norman shows up at the comedy cellar table, he high fives everybody. He's got something witty to say to everybody, something cute to say to everybody. And then, but then he'll pretend he's like socially awkward. I'm socially awkward. Okay, I don't even go to the comedy cellar table, but when I did, it was always awkward. And like Colin would say, no one's ever like, oh, know, good, Brennan's like, here. You don't want to. You don't want to be the guy that people go, oh, great, look, here's fucky. You know what I mean? They, what, what they're happy to see you? Yeah, you don't want to be that guy. No, that's Mark Norman. This I'm not talking about Mark Norman, but like someone is a, he uh, someone who's not a friend of the show? Someone who's not a friend of the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you don't want to be the guy who shows up and I was like, oh, I great, up, here's AJ. I, AJ I stood so up cool. to Louis C.K. because he was a uh, he started dating somebody. And she worked at the comedy cellar. So of course he's got they talk gotta talk about the uh comedy cellar comics. But if I do why well, I was doing it one time You stood up what do you mean you stood up? I was still I was doing it one time I was doing it one time with Liz, the manager, and Louie was sitting there doing what? Talking shit talking comics. Oh, okay. And then Louie was like, Come on, like aren't we better than this? And then but then it, when he starts fucking somebody <sighs> Then he's not better than that. Just, he's not better. Then he's he's had governors shit talking. The, they're actually going over the lineup. They're all going because at one point they go, Kevin, are you Billy Wagner? I go, yeah, because I was under an assumed name for a while there. So they go, <laughs> what? The Louis fuck? goes, are you Billy Wagner? I go, yeah. He didn't even ask why. That's how fucking uh, whatever he is. He just assumed. <laughs> like when you go, why are you Billy Wagner? Everybody else goes, why are you Billy yeah, Wagner? Why are you Billy Wagner? But he's like, are you Billy Wagner? I go, yeah. He goes, okay. So uh, <laughs> I'm like, what a what a self-centered fucking Madison Square Garden selling out motherfucker. Anyway, so uh so so he's he's going over the lineup. Don't, don't you open for him? Yeah. He's going over the lineup. <laughs> what? He's going what over do you the... do? This is your opportunity, and it's a golden goose. Just, Where's just the camera? Chill, chill he's out. Going over, chill he's out. going over the lineup, the literally the lineup with his girlfriend, and they're like shit talking other comics. So he shit talks his one guy, I go. And normally everybody, everybody else would go like, I'll just, I go, I'm friends with the guy, please. He's a good guy. I like him. He's a, he does a good job emceeing and blah, blah, blah. So you said this. Yeah. I stood, I stood up. You said him. this. Yeah. Cause you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to just go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. What else, sir? What else should I think, sir? <laughs> what else should I think, sir? He's a good comic and he's rich. What do you, that's what you're supposed no, that's to do. What I, no, that's you're supposed to just agree with him, even if even if uh, he's wrong and or uh, you know you're so friends you will, with the guy. You will stand, look, here's a, we've just found a. a although I don't, I'm not in love with this gossip right now, but we did find. A, I didn't even gossip. Who we gossip? Uh, but we did find a we good quality. Names. We did find a good quality there that he, someone was talking about your friend, and you said no, no, no. I, I can't have this. Yeah. Happen. Also, because I, I enjoy, I enjoy. I normally wouldn't have done it, but I enjoyed standing up to him. Oh, you didn't even like the cunt, right? No, I did <laughs> like the guy, cunt. but I did like the guy. Actually. But I did like the guy, but I know he's breaking protocol to stand up to the guy who basically brought me. The guy was paying me. I was open for him that night. So I, I basically, <laughs> I was basically breaking protocol because when the guy's, when you're open for the guy, you're supposed to agree with everything he says, even if, is that hey, the there's, rule? A, there's a shit, there's a good sandwich. No, it's, even if it's shit, you're supposed to be like, yeah, it is a pretty good fucking sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to agree. It's called yes and. So yeah. that's the thing. Improv. I happened to be one time with Adam. This goes to show. This is the last story I'll tell. And then I'm just going to hang up and listen. No, but, um, please. No, but then is, this is a, I learned this lesson years ago. This is how long I've been doing comedy. I was, I just done Conan. I just done Conan and Letterman within like the same, like probably calendar year or whatever. And then I was opening for Sandler at a college in Pennsylvania. And I, I wasn't friends with Sandler. I didn't even know him or anything, but somehow I just got on this gig and uh, whatever. So so the, the 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 college kid said, asked me, said, what do you want me to, I was going up first, I think. He said, what do you want me to say for intro? I say, uh, say I was just on Letterman. And I said, um, he goes, you want me to say Conan too? I go, no, don't say Conan because, and then Sandler goes, whoa, 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 I'm friends with him. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, and I kind of learned from that, like, be a man. Because Sandler showed me, like, you could stand, like, it's easier for Stan Sandler to stand up to me. He was already, like, big, you know. Yeah. But he was, because I was going to say, like, nobody gives a shit about Conan. Because then nobody oh. did sh give a shit about Conan. And yeah. he knew what I was going to, he probably knew what I was going to say. So he didn't want to make it awkward for me or him. So he cut me off. And then I said, no, I was just going to say that, like, I don't want to. I think when the guy left, I said, I don't want to give him too many credits because that's true, too. That is true. I said, I don't want to give him too many credits because then they, they're nervous and they'll fuck it up. But I was going to say, like, 
Nobody cares about Conan. Compared to Letterman at that point, that was like 93, 94. Nobody, that was when Conan was almost getting fired. Every so you learned a lesson of integrity I learned a lesson. from Adam Sandler. I learned a lesson like, don't don't talk shit about people. Good. Yeah. Good see. Don't talk and shit he, about people. And you never follow that rule once <laughs> in your life. <laughs> no, in a green room. In a green room. In a green How room. Is that? Oh, in the in green room, green but on a room. microphone with thousands yeah, of listeners. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Have be a man. Wait until no, I leave no, and then so record you know, it and monetize it. No, you know what it. happened? No, you know what happened? Put your gossip behind a paywall. Because to your point, you, to your point, uh, when I moved back, I was in LA for a couple of years for like 2011 to 2014. And then, and then like I had a bad experience out there. Not like I wasn't raped by fucking Mel Gibson or anything, but like, but like, <laughs> so just some other guy. No, but I was like, I just didn't, I didn't, you know, I just thought everyone was kind of weird to me and, and it was just like weird, you know? So when I came back here, I thought like, well, I'm never going to, I didn't, I didn't get any jobs out there either, really. So I was like, when I came back here, I was just like, I can do whatever I want now because I'm not going to ever work in show business again. And uh, like, I'm not going to get a regular job because I was getting too old. And if I was going to get a regular job, I would have got it while I was out there. So I'm mm -hmm. not going to get a regular job. And uh, and also I was like, uh, and then I was, I was separated from my wife at the time. So I could just kind of go on Opie and Jim and say whatever I wanted, whether it was about my wife or anything. I could be like real fucking, like I would say honest, but like real like forthcoming. And plus, mm. I'd never done their show. So I was just like, I would go on and be like, I would talk a lot of shit. Everybody liked it. And then I, and I liked it. It was almost like, I said this before, it's almost like when you murder somebody, your first murder is like, but then you're like, oh, shit, I enjoyed that, you know? Yeah. So I kind of enjoyed, like, the fans liked it. And then I enjoyed it because everybody, everybody's, like, afraid, you so, know? In show business, you're afraid because... If you get a bad reputation as a as well, it's like a, it's a retarded thing to do is to just burn all your bridges. Yeah, like it's, yeah, it's but stupid. Like it's a stupid thing. No, but it's you but it's also that, right? but uh, but no, it's not stupid because first of all, I'm making more money now than I've ever made, and because I'm making I make my own. I'm, I'm, I'm like a, you. I'm a self made man. I learned I learned from you. Entrepreneur. Did yeah, you? I learned from you. Don't fucking blame me for this. <laughs> no, so so I don't I don't really need people to fucking help me out. And then I I get like. Through my fans, I get like, uh, it's just, it, this is a better strategy than waiting for fucking Esty to give me spots or waiting for Patrick to give me Esty, spots. Friend or, of the show. Yeah, or Patrick, anybody. Friend of the show. Or, or I got to wait to get, see if the guy from Poughkeepsie called me back. You know, like, like a lot of dumb shit. So it's, <laughs> and it's not fun. It's not fun. It's not fun to be like a fucking lady waiting for a man to call. So I'm like, yeah. fuck it, man. So I'm going to do whatever I want. And I'm having a time in my life. And Mark Norman will see me and he'll be like, oh, Brennan's just, t Brennan's just goofing. I'm not! <laughs> this is not entertaining? It is. I your love fans, it. I your love fans it. will like, hate they, this? They love this. They'll love Everyone's it. Everyone's going to exactly. love this. And who's gonna, if I was a rapper, I'd be dead. Yeah. Since I'm not a rapper and comics are cowards. Yeah. Then I really don't have that much to worry about. Gary Goldman went after me. He uh, uh, Bobby Kelly went after me. Mostly guys from Boston. Uh, yeah. Chris Red knocked a cup of tea out of my hand. What? Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's as that's as bad as it gets. Yeah. No one's no one's done a drive by. Who would fuck you up? Who's actually like you couldn't take a risk? Jimmy Martinez. Yeah, he'd fuck you up, right? Well, but he, I, there I, was a there was a he almost fucked you up. Yeah, once? almost. What did, did you yeah. do this time? Like, I was I was you know I was a, a, we were doing a show together in a, in a at Riotcast above the comedy yeah. store, so you're kind of trapped up there, you know. No one can get in or out. Yeah. unlike a fucking school in Texas, and uh, <laughs> so uh, so we were having a little thing, and then he was like, he got fucking pissed, and he was gonna beat me up. He didn't, luckily for me, because he there was witnesses there. Would, it's on my. He would not, ruin you. Right? Yeah, he would. <laughs> he was a. He's a like supposedly. Supposedly, like he's one guy that like even like, you know, somebody was telling me a story. You know, Artie Fuqua was like a big dude. You know, mm -hmm. supposedly just like he had like Jimmy knows how to like grab your shoulder and just oh. make you like drop you to your knee. <laughs> like Steven Seagal type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like except a real, a real man. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Steven Seagal is like a fake Hollywood tough guy. Yeah. Jimmy's like, I think Jimmy just like everyone's afraid of Jimmy. And I didn't really know that side of Jimmy, you know, like we were having a good show because it was like, it was like, uh, What's that show with a Nick Nolte, that movie of Nick Nolte and uh, Eddie Murphy? That's what? going back. Oh. That movie, like 48 hours or whatever. It was like that. I was like the grizzled old veteran cop and he was like yeah. the younger fucking street, streetwise cop. Mm. So it was a good show. It was entertaining. I always found it entertaining. 
And then, uh, but then he wanted to kill me, you know. So I was like, well, oh, that's too entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be, listen, but then put that be, behind a paywall. Let's be honest. Some to good be views. fair, to be fair, then we I want to do with him at Compound because they have cameras there and there's people there. So, you know, if and everyone has guns. Yeah, if, yeah, <laughs> so, on, exactly. Yeah. So if something happens, we're protected. And then we had a show there for a couple of months, and then whatever. So there's know. there's no there's no sign of you slowing down. You're not done. I might stop, stop doing stand up and then just really go fucking hard. Yeah, because then I don't have to even see anybody. No, yeah. You'll just yeah, because that, that's a good point because now I am still have to run into people. Yeah, you just move out to Tennessee. I've, I have fucking <laughs> Nate on the show every now and again. <laughs> Nate and Theo Vaughn. <laughs> Imagine you sitting Me, down. Me, Nate and Theo Vaughn. <laughs> just riffing. No, it just, <laughs> the they'll, be like, they'll be like, Kevin. Yeah. You know, because they're like, they uh, whatever. I don't want to go there, but like, they're they're dull. Let's face it, they're dull, and they're not going to say anything. And they they <laughs> they'd look at me going like, "This guy's crazy." Yeah. Well, listen, they're know. like you know they're doing well, so they don't have to say anything on a podcast to make it interesting. That you know their fans are dumb, and they'll just watch them no matter what they do. You know, yeah, they got something to lose. They can't just go out. Yeah, there saying, hey. yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> No, but they, it's like they're like hot, they're like a hot chick. A hot chick doesn't have to do anything. She just shows up. Yeah. She doesn't have to be interesting. So Theo Vaughn, does he have to be interesting? I no, like and he's proving it. Yeah, you like a hot chick too, right? <laughs> yeah. So there you go. There, there, you're proving my point. <laughs> Let me um, say some. Uh, we we prepared some words, all right, and then you just got to say the first thing. Wait, are you? Uh, I thought you were going to do no, some a, reads. No, 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 no. We oh. do it all in post. All right, but oh, you do? yeah, we don't have you fucking ruining sheath underwear. <laughs> sheath underwear dot com. Use the promo code Kali. Do you ever use sheath? It's so funny. Do you ever it's use so sheath underwear dot com? No. Sheath underwear dot com. Promo code Kali. You know why? Because I'm not a gay man. It's no. Yeah, I don't know if have you. Yeah, have you worn it, them? It, 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 it's not gay. Do they hug my nuts? They they do vibrate on your balls. Okay, well that's gay. No, my wife's always like, you need better underwear. I'm like, I need a better wife. That's. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that in my act. Does that one work? <laughs> no wonder you're not doing well. You need better underwear. I need a better wife. That's gonna work. That's I don't not care bad. What anybody says no. That's like a joke because I have a bunch of jokes about my wife, and I need the I need the like the little setup jokes to get to the bigger jokes. Yes. I gotta kill time. These crowds are staring at me. Yeah. They yeah. hate anti-wife jokes though. These crowds at the nah, cellar. Listen, but that listen. Here's the problem with the anti-wife things, right? It's like no, because that's old-fashioned. No, but it's it's still accurate. <laughs> the problem is, is they haven't changed. This is my problem. They was like, oh, that's hacky. But rather than change that, that's they should make it so that the joke isn't relevant anymore. Right? Because women are better now. No, but, but they, they still think, stink. No, because no, because it's, it's a joke as old as fucking time. Yeah, and it's it's gonna stay that way. Yeah, because it's it not never, getting any better. It never changes. No repercussions. Well, no matter who you, no matter who you're living with, you're gonna get sick of them. So, and that just that's turns exactly. Out. If you were a gay man who was out, you would fucking have jokes about your boyfriend and exactly. how he can men about suck. his balls, his fucking and how he, sheath and how underwear, and how he's so funny and he helps <laughs> and he's. <laughs> That'd be funny if I was gay and I always said was good things about my husband. <laughs> yeah, no, I love my hanging husband's up. dick. It's so hard. It gets oh. so hard. Yeah, mm. so now, I'm, now I'm getting myself turned on. Anyway, we're uh, gonna play a little game here because yeah, I know ahead. how much you love games. I'm gonna just say some things and you just say the first word that comes to your head. All right? all right. What if I don't play? Well, then I'll just edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So no one wins. All right. Okay. You ready? Yeah. For Should a little I close my eyes. Hmm? I close my eyes if you want. Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, okay. Then I gotta protect. Yeah. Them, otherwise, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be like, uh, I'll be, I won't be able to focus okay. if I'm looking at Here you guys. Go. Right, real quick. We're done. Just, just don't think about it. Just first word, okay? SNL. Failure. Bill Burr. Redhead. People in wheelchairs. Hilarious. <laughs> Hack. Me. Robert Kelly. Fat. Anthony Cumia. Handsome. Lasagna. Too thick. <laughs> George Carlin. I'm a fan. That was it. Very good. Give a round of applause, folks. For that, for you that know what I was going to say about guys in a wheelchair? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Cumia, I was... Uh, Did you say hilarious for people in wheelchairs? Is that what you said? No, because... What did uh, he say? He hilarious. said hilarious, right? No, because... Wow. Uh, <laughs> because um, I saw... We, me and I had a... We were at um, 
Speaking of goofballs. See, so people, <laughs> people are stupid. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, like yeah. we're comics. We, we, the one thing comics understand is like, I think people think who aren't comics, they think they're like, they want to be funny too. But then the problem with non comics is they don't understand like everything's not funny, you know? So the, the thing is, comics oh, are, we have a better not sense. Not everything of, is funny. We have a better sense of humor. We have a better sense of like what's funny and what's not funny, you yeah. know? Because because people people who aren't comics they think just anything mean is funny, and it's, anything mean is not funny. Mm. You know what I mean? Because if if that was true, then the fucking shooting in Texas would be hilarious. You know, because that's mean. Yeah. But anyway, so so we're at we're <laughs> you brought it up six times. <laughs> we're at Sullivan's. We're at Sullivan's across from Compound Media. Yeah. And uh, do you and drink? Do you drink? I drink when I'm there. Good. All right. That's the only time I really drink because I'm not gonna fucking sit there and hang out with Gino and not drink. <laughs> So, uh, so we're all talking and, uh, some guy, we're all shooting the shit or whatever. And some guy comes in in a wheelchair and, uh, and somebody goes, Hey, look, it's, uh, it's Aaron Berg or something. He says something like that, but he's not, he's not on the, he's not a compound media, uh, talent. He's just a fan. He's a Is friend. Is that what they call him? Yeah. <laughs> the he's, fri- he's a friend. He's a friend of the show, but they all think they're oh. funny too because they're hanging out with oh, the okay. funny guys. You yeah. Know? So he goes, he goes, oh, look. He goes, oh, look. It's Aaron Berg. It's a guy in a wheelchair. Yeah. Because I so saw he's small and bald. Is he? I don't know. But so, but we all look. <laughs> we all look. We don't know it's a guy in a wheelchair. We all look. And it's a guy in a wheelchair with his family. Oh, no. So we all look. And then they leave. Uh, and I'm like, that's not funny at all. That's, that's not funny at all. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Like, like I would never go, hey, look, Aaron Berg. You might say when a guy walk by, walk, he, he rolls by you. Or you might say, but you don't say where everyone's going to look at a guy in a wheelchair. Who's with his family at a shit bar on 35th Street? That's one of my sponsors. And uh, so the guy fucking leaves. And I was like. Wow, this is so I'm like, that's that's the difference between like comics and like just comics have an idea of like, that's not this will be funny. That won't be funny. Mm. So I was talking to Kumia. Uh, I think I was telling Kumia the story or whatever. And I said and I said uh, I said I saw I saw a guy recently in a wheelchair going to a show at the comedy cell, you know, because they, they can only go to that the rooms upstairs because they can't go down those gigantic stairs they can just roll themselves down yeah they can get pushed or whatever they're already in a wheelchair what what if louis Louis was on they'd fucking oh yeah you're right they'd fucking (laughs) but kevin brandon they need a ramp (laughs) they need a lot of it so the guy's getting pushed in the in the thing and i was like i go good for him i go because i know if i was in a wheelchair i would not be going to any comedy show because i'm not going to be like hey you know you know what that last guy was real funny i forgot i couldn't walk that guy was so funny. I was shaking, convulsing, except my legs, because they don't move for nothing. So I want to do that bit, but it's too dark, right? Yeah. I'll do it tonight. I'm doing opening for Ray DeVito in uh, Shithole Astoria. You live in Astoria? Yeah. <laughs> where's the Where's the yeah, bar? I don't know. That 34 something, 34? Studio 34 or something. Is that what it's called? I think it's called that, yeah. yeah. I Hopefully it's on 34th Street or 34th Avenue or nice. 34th Road. They, yeah. they have a lot of... I used to live over there. So, so you're open of, for Ray DeVito. Yeah. That's, that's so a, so, so yeah. it is the way down. It is. It is on, <laughs> I am officially I he, on the way down. He's looking for signs with your career. This is a sign. <laughs> I think so. A couple of years ago, you wouldn't even been on the same lineup. It's funny it? because uh, me and Levy, Bob Levy, you know him? Yeah. Me and Bob Levy and uh, Ray were on a show. Got I, great blue eyes. You know that? Thank you. Dude, that's, that's what all the strippers say to me, too. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. I go, yeah, you're a hack, it's too. to shut you up. <laughs> no, I know. They, they, no, they want to compliment go- me, so that's the easiest thing to say. I'm they go, saying, oh, you got you beautiful know? blue everyone, eyes. Everyone fucking is like, oh, Kevin Brennan's a prick, all this stuff. But you got great eyes. Thanks. So, <laughs> like, don't, only- don't fucking, don't, don't, forget, don't be afraid to flaunt it. That's my only saving grace is that something I don't even control. Kevin Blue Eyes. Yeah. So anyway, if you so could, uh, they'd be black. If they, they'd, so what was, what was I gonna say? You were talking about Ray DeVito. And, oh yeah, so me and well, Ray and and Levy are on the show, and uh, so Ray goes on first. He brought a he invited a woman there to see him, and then but he saw her. He goes, "That's not what you look like in the picture." So I guess she was fatter than he thought she w- would be. That's what happens. Of course, that's why you meet him in person at Sullivan's. 
Mm. So um, she comes in in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, my new girlfriend. Everybody turns Everybody and goes, she's like, "Hey, you cocksuckers, you fucking all staring at me." <laughs> I know why you're staring at me, because I'm hot. She comes jingling and jangling, yeah. and, you know. That's what a woman would say. I know why you're staring at me, because I'm hot. Not because I'm in a wheelchair, right. You take you're a hot. photo, it lasts longer. Yeah. So uh, that's Stop. what you used to say. And now you can take a photo with your phone. You can have that. I don't even. Can't even no, women, you can't say, even, you no, go, why don't you take don't, a picture? It lasts longer, but nobody had a camera then. So they can't say now because now you can't take a picture. You go, I am taking. I'm recording. And then you, you. fucking been, whack been, off to it. I've been recording it. you this whole time. Yeah. Is that how you? So, uh, nice. so, uh, so I'm I'm doing a show and we're gonna wrap it up here because I gotta go open for Ray. I don't no, wanna no, be late. No, no, I don't no, wanna no. be late for Ray. Okay. I'll, it's bad enough that I'm open for him. I don't wanna be fucking late on top of it. Big time him. Big time him. So, uh, so Ray goes on first, and it's his club Tiffs in in uh, New Jersey. You should do a show out there. I'd love to. Don't you have a crew that you go out with? Sometimes, yeah. All right. So, yeah, what's it called? Yeah. I saw you bad were at me. Helium or something. Yeah, Bad Dad or something? Bad Me. They they have a podcast called Dad Me. Okay. So, uh, so it it was, uh, so uh, he goes on, Ray goes on, he's eating his own dick, and I feel bad for him. <laughs> I feel bad for him because he brought a lady there, even though, oh. she's, even though she's fat, you don't want to bomb in front of a it's fat worse. lady. It's worse. He, he Cause should... now, yeah, because now she won't even fuck you. You know, if a fat girl won't fuck you, you're really bummed. <laughs> so he goes, uh, so then Levy goes up. Levy said he was tired or whatever, so he, he, he didn't want to close. So I go, all right. So then Levy kills. Levy's destroyed. I'm like, oh, this is Ray. Really, Ray really looks really bad now because he bombed and Levy's killing. And I'm like, I can't wait to get up there and get a piece of this fucking hot crowd. <laughs> <laughs> then I go up and fucking eat my own dick worse than fucking Ray. Oh. And I'm like, thank God my family's not here. Yeah. Thank God my wife is not here. And I was like, me and Ray stink, and Levy's great. So, so yeah. So I'm on the way, yeah. and, then, and now three months after that, I'm opening for Ray. <laughs> but he is taping his <laughs> is something. He is, he is he, taping his special. Is he date, still dating the girl? Is he? No, but I want to get her on my show because I think she's a comic, and she had a lot oh, to, wow. she had a lot to say about Ray. Wow. About Ray rejecting her because she Ray rejected her even after he bombed. But then he made out with her anyway because ah. I think he got that he the was sad. pity. The, yeah, he was sad, so he needed some consolation. All right, we're done a wrap up, right? But listen, just b before we go, um, you're gonna give me some words of advice? Yeah, like Doctor Phil or or something. Um, no, no. Look, for all I'm gonna turn it for, around. For, I'm gonna turn listen, it around. for your for your reputation as a, um, as a as a prick, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, for all the um, relationships, I do have beautiful blue eyes. Is that what you're gonna you, say? You, for all the relationships that you've destroyed and all the bad stuff you've said over these, is there anything that you'll say now, just like, like to apologize to someone, or is there just something with, to say where you go like, oh, you know, I shouldn't have been that mean to that person? I do feel bad. I will apologize to this guy because Gino brought him up today on his show. I called him the Gino Show today. Gino has a show at CompoundMedia.com. It's on like two to three thirty. Aaron Berg just quit. It was a, he was the talent on the show, and so now Gino's struggling. So I call in more. And uh, does Gino like that? The, to be called the uh, when you call in, I think so because he he don't have a sidekick anymore. Okay, but basically he was the sidekick. Yeah. So the so Berg left. So now Gino. Yeah, it's the Adventures of Robin right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, so. Um, I forgot. You phoned in. You phoned into it. They had a guy on the show and you phoned in. You called in. And then what else? I don't know. I didn't. There's what were we talking story. about? I'm really, I really lost. You want to apologize to the guy. Oh, yeah. So he was, uh, so he was, um, Gina was mad at my former sidekick. This guy, uh, this guy, Brian McCarthy, is was blind. Mm -hmm. He's legally blind. Mm hmm. He was my former sidekick, and he was also an alcoholic. Like a, he's he doesn't drink anymore supposedly, but but uh, couldn't see how much he was drinking. No, he drank. He he used to get like a he used to right. get like a highball. Yeah, and he would he would drink it in one gulp because he said he said he didn't want to spill it. Yeah, because if he drank it, if he took a lot of sips, he would probably pour it over his shoulder. Yes, yeah, so, well, why did he have six of them? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so uh, so. So Gino's ranting and raving. I'm just, Levy told me to watch. So he's, Gino's ranting and raving about Brian McCarthy. And I go, Gino, I call him, I go, Gino, Brian McCarthy didn't do that. He goes, he goes, isn't he disabled? 
isn't he disabled.com or whatever on YouTube or whatever? I go, no, that's Joe Exotic. There's a lot of cast and characters, but Joe Exotic is this guy that that Brian McCarthy, uh, he stole, Brian McCarthy was starting like a YouTube channel called Dislabeled, but mm. when you start a YouTube channel, you have to have like a hundred subscribers. So <laughs> Joe, so Joe, so Brian was trying to build it up to get a hundred subscribers and he's blind. So Joe Exotic as a prank stole his thing. <laughs> so Brian couldn't have it, even though he's blind and Brian can't even wipe his own ass practically. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Gino. He didn't steal. He he didn't tweet anything because he can't tie his own fucking shoes. <laughs> so Gino's like, "That's not Brian McCarthy." I'm like, no, it's Joe Exotic. You fucking idiot. So I would like to pi apologize for Brian McCarthy because he was a good sidekick. Okay. And then uh, right. and I probably could have been nicer to him. And he, you know, he was my sidekick for like a couple of years, and he was probably the best I ever had or ever deserved to have. Oh wow. <laughs> wow. Now I'm making it extra gay. Wow. And ever extra sappy. No, but he was good. So I should have, I should I was going to have him on my show at some point, but I, it's almost better if we don't reconcile because then no. it's, then it's bad. Then it's more, it's more like a no, thing. No, you reconcile. You no, then it, that's, that's maybe when I find out I have cancer officially, like I'm waiting for tests. Are you going to tell but, everybody? Or you don't be like, no, no, I'm, no, I'm going to tell everybody. Yeah. I'm going to tell everybody. I'm or, gonna, I'm going to do the opposite why, of what Norm did. I'm going to tell everybody at the bagel store. Can yeah. I get a bagel? I'm dying. Or why, why wait? Be like fucking, um, Quincy, Quincy Jackson or whatever. Yeah. And, and, ta and tell Ellen. You tell Ellen. Yeah. All right. Kevin Brennan. Ellen's like, almost done, right? She she's done. Yeah. Isn't she done? She's retiring from whatever. No, she is it is she done yet? She's done. Because I saw somebody tweeted Leslie Jones was was guest hosting, but isn't it isn't she retired? Or are they gonna still pretend like she's doing the show are we, still? Are we searching? We're looking you're like we're gonna wrap up and then you bring, you decide that we need yeah, to. Yeah, I gotta go. I'm gonna be late for a race uh, show. This is the worst topic anyone's ever done on the podcast. And I've done some awful stuff. What is Ellen? Is Ellen still going? You, you brought it up. You fucking brought it up. You no, psycho. she's Quincy Jones, and then I thought Leslie Jones because it's her. It's her brother, or maybe they're related. Because a lot of the Jones are related. A lot of Jones and Johnsons, and Williams. <laughs> <laughs> All right. yeah, they, they I'm went, talking in. I'm hey, talking, he's not wrong. This guy. You I'm say, talking in Gino code now. I'm winking a lot. <laughs> hey, those Williams out there, they'll they'll really, they'll stab you in the back. <laughs> They'll get your wallet. Those you. be careful with those Williams and the Jones and the Johnsons. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Brown. God bless America. Never forget. Never forget. Never forget. Do you right. guys forget? Because you're not from right. here. <laughs>